Hey, hello and welcome back. Today is a Sunday again and um, I know you can see the setting is completely different and that is because it's been a rather gloomy day in the morning so I really couldn't film because I just use um, natural light and since I couldn't I thought I'll experiment a little bit and see how this lighting works. So um, I'm not sure so you know um, let me know if the lighting works great for you and um, we're just trying to improve one little tiny step one percent at a time. So before I check on you you know what's going on with me so as usual there is work and still at home and um, nothing much is happening other than seeing the numbers going up on a regular basis i'm sure uh, you are seeing it too if you are based in india uh, and i know in other parts of the world as well things are uh, definitely changing i have been buying a little bit of items here and there and um, i don't know about you but definitely my spending and the, um, the places where I spend my money has been influenced by the pandemic to quite a bit of extent because suddenly I've realized that uh, how many number of uh, shoes you have or you know um, tops or jeans or shirts you have bags you have doesn't matter anymore we're just down to the basic with the change of this lifestyle as I'm sure with a lot of you uh, there definitely has been the way we are spending our money when we choose to spend the money and today I thought I'll talk about where uh, I am spending my money if that interests you and along with that I think what I have I think I've talked about this before as well in one of my uh, videos before that I've stopped going to the malls and I'm trying to be more internalize the way I'm spending my money and what I'm trying to do with my life uh, I don't know if it comes with the age or it comes with your thought process or the people you're around with but there has been a bit of a mindset shift that has been going even before the pandemic hit now with the pandemic again I'm rethinking more on what I'm doing and what I want to do uh, in this period of time and what I foresee for myself in the future. So um, the spending is much more it's more of an intentional spending than impulsive spending. So I know impulsive spending is so easy for all of us to do right probably like in Amazon you have your credit card or your mode of payment already it's in there you will really like something you just add it to the card and get it done. Um, so I thought for me. Um, I had to come up with a process or a way to make sure that I wasn't just hitting on the add to cart button or order button. I was thinking over the whole thing where I'm spending my money and definitely how I want to spend my money. So what I came up with is what I name it as a two tier authentication process for intentional spending and I'll share a little bit an overview uh, with you. Um, so um, if you're ready get yourself a cup of tea or coffee and we'll get chatting. Okay, so coming back to where I was, what I have done as part of the uh, two-tier authentication system for intentional spending is, the first step is to list out all the things, sort of like a wish list. You know, things you want to buy, things you're really looking at a couple of times. You are very sure, you know, I've thought about it for a month and yes, I want to go for it. So just name it. It could be basics like rice. It could be something like, oh, I want a treadmill. Or it could be school supplies for your kids, it could be flowers that you really haven't had for a long time, uh, food items, whatever it is. So it could be a list of things that you, first of all, you really think you need to buy and you can just list them down. Once you have them listed down, so maybe take as many as you want, 10, 20, 15 of, the, uh, of those items. And then what you do simply is you create in a piece of paper, Excel chart, whichever way you want to do it you basically have four um, quadrants. So you have a must have, could have, should have and won't have right now at least, right? So what you do is you take these each items and put it in the quadrant where you think it belongs. So well, let's say if it's rice, you need to have your basic. So it, it will automatically go into your must have things. Now, however, if you already have like, let's say 10 kgs of rice in your house at this point of time, it not be in your must have list, it will, you know, go to some other quadrant because you, it's already taken care of. You have enough um, grains or materials in your food in, in your home right now to feed yourself and your family, let's say for the next one month, two months, um, whatever the number is. Now let's talk about let's say school supplies. So yes, school is starting up, but though you know kids are mostly doing it from home, you will still need those school supplies. So you know it it probably will still go in your must-have column. Now what else? So let's say you want a treadmill. 
Um, treadmill is a tricky part, right? It makes you think like, is it a must have for me? Or, um, you know, maybe I don't need to spend so much money right now. So you're still thinking, but you think, hey, I really want to stay fit and I really want to do this and I can't go to the gym right now. So why not? Yes, I want it. So you put the treadmill in the must have column. Similarly, you take your entire list and make sure you have put them in the all four quadrants. I'll repeat again, must have, could have, should have, won't have right now, right? So once you put all of these into the places, then for now, for today, we just look at the must have columns, right? So because that is something you will immediately purchase. Now, before you go and spend your money, you still want to think and sort of like revise once more in your head and analyze like, Am I spending the money in the right place? So that takes us to the second part of the authentication process. This method uh, of these four quadrants, as you already probably know, is also called the Moscow method. Now, Moscow method is used for prioritization and that is exactly what we have been doing here. We're looking at a checklist of 10 items, 20 items, and then we are prioritizing based on our needs. And we're looking at what really we need to buy right now against what you know we can defer to maybe a month or two even later. So once part one is done, part two is again very simple. Now you have the must have. So let's say you have rice, you have school supplies and you have a treadmill as part of your must haves right now. So what you do is you take all these three items and then you compare, right? So comparison in the sense is you will look at why you need it, like sort of a strength like okay i really need to feed my family so that is one of the requirements so it could be the strength it could be the weakness opportunity and the threats so let's take the treadmill because that is the tricky one right so let's say um, in the pandemic right now all gyms are closed and you're kind of a person who really likes going to the gym or you're the, a fitness freak who has been exercising for the last two three months you know in your home and that has been working great but you're missing that full energy core thing that you want to go for and you think it's fine for you to go ahead and purchase that or put the money there because it makes sense to you um, obviously uh, every person is different our requirements are different and what can be uh, not a must have for someone could be must have for someone as well right like this treadmill so if you're the person who are thinking who's thinking like oh i need to get the treadmill so what is the strength for you the strength is you do not have to obviously go outside anyways the gyms are probably co uh, closed you still can exercise at home and get a good workout uh, you will still meet your goals your objectives keep yourself fit sustain that um, momentum in your life for exercising which you have built for a really like maybe one year two year or more uh, period of time it could be that you have health issues and you need to exercise so you could be someone who has to exercise over a period of time um, that could be the strengths of it uh, of course you know even if you have like spare five minutes or ten minutes because you have it in your home you can just jump on the treadmill and then get it done what is the opportunity the opportunity could be oh, sorry the weakness the weakness could be the fact that it is expensive um, treadmills are not very cheap so you have to think twice before like do my strengths override my weaknesses as in the purchase of the amount of money that i'm going to spend so that is a big part your opportunity is your fitness goal your objectives or why you exercise or you need the treadmill and obviously the part where it's threatening is okay so what happens if i don't buy or is there a risk to it well the risk is once you have a treadmill at home and especially if you have small kids at home you have to be very, very careful you really don't want them to switch it on and then you know they fall on the treadmill and hurt themselves so you have to take that precaution and that care you also have to make sure you have that enough space in your house probably not part of threatening but definitely part of weakness we talked about the price and yes space though you can fold it up and all that it still requires a little bit of space and it's bulky so if you don't have a lot of space in your home and um, like me you have to uh, shove it somewhere in the corner in the living room yes it does not look very good um, it definitely does not look very good but again it's on your priority if you think that is important you go for it if it's not your priority or you have alternative ways of exercising or maybe you're not into this sort of gym treadmill mode you like to do yoga or you like to go for walks and runs things like that then again it shouldn't be part of your must have list so things like that so now what you have done is you have taken an item from your must have column and now you have analyzed it properly based on what you know and what you can research and find and see what fits what now when you have all these four parameters with you you can probably make a choice or a decision that really how much do you want the treadmill so once you 
make that analysis based on what we talked about as SWOT analysis, then you can you know go ahead and decide if you really want to spend the money, right? So that is the two-tier authentication system that usually I will use. Um, so you know if you like it, go ahead and share it with your friends and um, let me know if this works for you. Now to the main part, where I have been spending my money. So. Um, what I have realized, I think, um, along with a lot of us uh, globally right now, is the fact that life has become very simple, right, for all of us. Uh, like I said, like you don't need 20 pair of jeans, you don't need m multiple shoes, bags, whatever uh, we used to think we need or we had. Or um, So, for me, I think it has been more about the time to reflect on my personal growth. And by personal growth, it could be linked to your career that you have. It could be linked to your uh, hobby like this that you have. Where are you putting your energy? What are you trying to do? And if you're spending this money on X or Y, where does it take you? So like I said, because I have focused a little more on personal development, most of my spending and money has gone towards it. So I'll talk about them in three categories I think um, the first one is subscriptions okay so subscriptions the I have couple of them um, subscribe and I'll tell you the price um, and why I subscribe to them so maybe it gives a little bit of context and perspective my first one is YouTube um, I subscribe to YouTube premium why because i watch youtube a lot um, i watch mostly on the personal development space i also definitely watch a lot of lifestyle and things like that but i also use youtube more of more as a learning platform for me so let's say if i am um, looking at a e-course so for example i'll tell you a hack so <laughs> um, a lot of um, course creators whom you'll find find in skillshare most of them well i don't know if all of them a lot of them have youtube channels okay so let's say you are interested in learning python or you're learning how to be exceptional at excel or you're trying to be more creative and learn calligraphy whatever it is or photoshop all these people in skillshare probably have um, has a channel in youtube if you know the author's name and you you know look them up in youtube you will find the same content in youtube for free i mean if you're not subscribed you you, you still have youtube right so that is one and of course the second is now that i um, do youtube my way in a very small way i understand the amount of effort it takes to really do a good youtube video and it's just not the content it's also the filming the editing the lighting like i'm trying right now there are multiple things that that goes into it right so um things are not as easy as it seems like um and and it's difficult it's difficult to balance it all because you know when you are starting out you are a one-man army you are pretty much doing everything on your own and you're learning and i just learned oh you can insert a picture here and i'm wow like this is like you know <laughs> makes my day so um, there is so much to learn and so much to do so I thought if I can uh, spend a little more and support the YouTube community because I am in my own way a part of it right now um, that would be nice so I it, the YouTube subscription um, is 169 rupees per month uh, you don't get any ads and things like that and I really enjoy that and it's not really a lot of money so it's very basic so that is why I subscribe to YouTube. That's number one. Number two is um, Spotify. Now for Spotify, I didn't subscribe for a really long time. I mean, I, I enjoyed the free version. I had the app on my phone. But the horrible thing about Spotify is if you're on the free version is every time you listen to something, there are two kinds of ads that comes up. They have like creepy ads and I hate like horror movies and somehow I don't know how they find me to put that horror movie ad or horror some show coming up ad in my ads in Spotify and I hated them and they, they just don't end so there was a point I 
I pretty much stopped listening to Spotify because I was getting so irritated. I was listening to the same ads over and over again. And the second ad is obviously like subscribe to Spotify. It was driving me crazy. So I stopped listening to Spotify. And then, you know, like you keep on getting pings and pushes and notifications and emails like join the this, join that, subscribe. I never did because I wasn't really happy with the fact that they were like pushing me to get into subscription mode. At the same time, I was listening to a lot of a uh, little bit of music here and there for my study, sort of like a background jazzy music or something light. So sometimes when I'm working for a longer period of time, I really need that kind of little bit of refreshment. And I like that and I hated the ads coming up. Also, I use it when I work out. So um, they sent an offer of uh, Spotify being like 50% off and they gave like a 10, 15 day duration. I don't remember right now how much I paid for, but basically whatever is the annual subscription, it was slashed to 50% of it. And um, that's when I got it. So I paid that entire amount for one year at 50% off. If I have to pay the full amount, I probably will not subscribe to Spotify again. Uh, so um, yeah, just to be very honest about it. So the second one is Spotify. The third one, what do I have? Netflix. Um, I have talked about it before. I do not have any cable TV channels and we stopped it. I can't remember it's been more than a year now probably um, we don't have any cable TV channels so the only um, source of entertainment that we have is either YouTube or Netflix for me YouTube works fine I, I really don't watch a lot of movies um, but the rest of the family enjoys Netflix and uh, so we still have Netflix. let's move on to e-learning okay so the courses that I'm trying to learn and where have I subscribed so I have subscribed to Skillshare now Skillshare is pretty expensive because I have the monthly premium membership and I'm looking because I'm trying to look at the number here it's 5.99 per month now Skillshare obviously you can cancel anytime um, I like the way Skillshare classes are designed in comparison to if you look at Coursera or Udemy one because the classes are very small like one hour like 45 minutes things like that and I really enjoy uh, watching them because it gives you an overview and sometimes that 45 minutes of content is enough for you to sit back and think like I think there is a I think there is a video of Thomas Frank on productivity uh, so th those videos are really really good uh, but the reason I took it was um, I was trying to learn or take a course for something specific and I really wanted I heard the courses in Skillshare were very good so that is the reason I had it subscribed I still have it but probably once I'm done I'm going to um, cancel the subscription so this is very like how can I say like requirement based uh, subscription but I will not continue with it the other one is Udemy. Now Udemy, I did not subscribe. I just like you can't, you basically buy courses. So um, they had, I think 25% off, bought like I think two or three, uh, two or three courses. Two of them were part of like uh, life coaching and um, one was on NLP and things like that. So uh, because they were giving a good sale, I thought I'll buy and keep them. So, you know, when I have the time, I don't have to pay the full, full price and go back and get them done. Um, personal development and learning the other part of personal development which is not related to um, technical skills or any other skill set is could be just the basic of cooking skills well not cooking skills really I just enjoy to I think cooking for me is very fun and um, innovative and I really don't follow a recipe so even if I'm looking for something specific I'll read the recipe but I'll do it my own way um, I think that is the thing I like about cooking because it's flexible, it's yours, you can make it yours. It just always does ha doesn't have to be like two plus two, has to be four. Um, I don't have a lot of food items to show, but I did do some crazy purchases. One, because I'm trying to eat more at home and obviously not trying to eat more at home. I am eating at home and sometimes the food is like same repetitive food and how much can you do? And I personally like a lot of... Um, Asian food and um, I, I like a lot of lot of kinds of food so um, let me just keep my cup here so I can show you and I'm going to start with um, I bought soba noodles now I don't know and it's from wheat what else does it say sakura soba noodle can you see here sakura soba noodle so I have bought this before, I think from Qmart. Um, if you're in Hyderabad, you'll probably know, Q, uh, you probably have gone to Qmart. Uh, soba noodles are a little bit expensive from the regular noodles that you get in uh, any normal grocery like Reliance or Ratnadeep or anywhere else. 
but I really like them. Um, I think I, I'm not sure if this is authentic, like authentic dish or not. But I like soba noodles cold as well. So um, sometimes I'll make it the night before. I'll have half of it. The rest I'll have it cold, like I will not warm it, and it's like amazing and awesome. Um, the reason I started buying soba noodles is I needed to make a quick lunch for my son um, because his school bus used to come at 8 a.m. in the morning, and I had to get things done before that and three boxes to pack. I just started using soba noodles. He loves a lot of noodles and um, same thing Asian food and I thought this is a great way to put in veggies as well and just like sort of a stir fry you boil it and get it done. Um, but then I started having it for me also for my lunch and things like that and I love it. So um, now that um, grocery is very limited I still don't go to a lot of places and you probably don't get soba noodles in big basket. I don't think you would get but Amazon that's where I got it from. Um, what else? This one is crazier than the other. This is gochujang paste, hot pepper paste. I'll try to show you. Can you see? Yeah. Call me crazy. That's okay. Okay, it's fiery paste. Smells pretty good. Um, I started watching a lot of Korean lifestyle channels. I just got into it because they had some amazing I sometimes like to relax with something in the background like I said I watch a lot of YouTubes so even if I'm like working on something as in writing a blog post or I'm trying to uh, script for a YouTube or, or whatever anything sometimes I just like to keep something on and which doesn't have a lot of voice or serious stuff going on so I started watching this lovely now, Korean channels where they talk about their regular life and they show a lot of cooking and all that. That's where I got introduced to this. And I've been watching it for so long that at some point I thought I have to try something Korean. Like I haven't tried it yet. Um, when I opened the box, I just licked a little bit to see like how fiery it was. I like it so far. But, you know, once I get to it and I make something out of it, maybe I'll just let you know. So, Okay. Yeah, the last one. Food items. So, um, my love for sushi <laughs> is, um, I love sushi. So, and they are very expensive, like insanely expensive. Um, in Hyderabad, the best sushi I have had, uh, the restaurant that is like Alakate restaurant, I, I, I forget the names, I'm very bad at it. Um, it's expensive but it's very very good and uh, you also get in um, fusion 9 and all and I love them if you're looking at Swiggy stuff there is a restaurant called Hashi I don't know where it delivers or where I think it's from Banjara Hills or Jubilee Hills I, I'm not sure uh, they have good sushi and I used to enjoy them once in a while I can still see them in Swiggy right now but I really don't order from outside anymore and I have been craving sushi for a really long time so, I thought I'll get that bamboo mat roll and make my own sushi at home, but the bamboo mat, the, the cheaper version, um, wasn't available. And I ordered the nori rolls, the seaweed rolls, and still hasn't come in. However, I have these molds, the onigiri molds. Um, so, I see in these Korean channels a lot, like the lifestyle channels, and... Um, that you basically take you're making your own sushi and you compress them so what you do is again forgive me if I'm not right but this is what I understood so I'll just come a little closer can you see I can stand and show you here so what it comes with is basically plastic okay and you press your rice here like your sushi rice and then you put a filling so you can put like egg or salmon or anything that you like and put another a layer of rice and then you take this and you press it so this is like inside right it presses the rice and then you can take it out okay I think that's about it um, okay so um, I think three things that I have on my list wish list right now I'm, I'm fine sharing it with you if one is ring light ring light is if you're aware of how how you film in YouTube I'm, I'm sure you have seen in a lot of places like you have a big ring like sort of like having a background but that's a mirror but you'll have a ring light and you where my head is you basically uh, in the middle of it you put your camera so uh, the light on your face is much more clear not like this because I'm using some you know normal lights in this room and um, a table lamp right there 
trying to you know hit me with a little bit of more light and clarity so it doesn't look very dark so i am hoping um for a ring light um i don't know when um yeah i'm just waiting i'm, I'm just thinking about it this one is definitely a dslr camera um well for two reasons one is if i have to buy a camera which has a uh, uh, like a flip uh, like a flip screen like you can see yourself and um, also uh, video recorded uh, i thought instead of buying a small one because i check like sony and all is like around 40000 and i thought like i'm going to spend 40000 once and then few days later i'll say like oh let's you know get a dslr so instead it's better to get the dslr at one go but it is expensive <laughs> so i'm i'm still thinking that you know should i buy it like will i be able to continue with YouTube only then it makes sense to buy a DSLR otherwise I really don't have any use for it so yeah I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out and um, what else I think there is uh, the music the pandemic music epidemic music I forgot what it's called <laughs> um, yeah so if you have a subscription to that you can use uh, music to insert in your um, YouTube videos um, yeah so all three things related to YouTube right now I, I, I the rest I think is all sorted so yeah that is where I am thinking I'm going to do if I ever buy one of those stuffs maybe I should do another video on where I'm spending my money and then I'm going to let you know yeah so that is all for today I think it's a wrap it's a wrap for today and I hope you have a lovely weekend and um, by the time you see it it will probably be somewhere in the week uh, because i film it on sundays and um, i will uh, edit it on monday or tuesday and then um, upload it depends on my schedule how fast i can edit it and you know the bloopers that i have how much i can get it covered and things like that but things have been improving i don't know if you feel it or you notice it uh, at least i i am feeling way more comfortable i do use a microphone now because uh, some of you said that the audio wasn't clear now that my audio is fixed i know my video quality has to be fixed but again i really don't want to go ahead and make that huge purchase of buying a dslr right now um, it's too expensive for me right now so that is something maybe will come in the future but yeah at least there are videos coming up a little more consistently so i am okay with that and if you like the content um, definitely let me know because i think that it you know it, it's 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 sort of a motivator for me as well to know that you like the content so either you hit the you know thumbs up button so i at least have a feeling or if you have any comments that would be lovely that would be lovely to read as well and um, if you have already subscribed thank you very very much for joining in and otherwise please feel free to subscribe and share among your friends don't forget to hit the bell button because you know that's how you get notified that a film has been uploaded uh, a video has been uploaded what i have been thinking so yeah thank you very much thank you very much for uh, joining me today and um, stay home stay safe and i'll see you next time bye bye